Okay, here we are back in the session. Um, I did reorganize it a little. I, I like to keep my instrumental on the top, probably keep the click track up towards the top. I tend to uh, minimize it because I'm not trying to automate uh, the volume. I just want it to be there and present, and the only thing I'm ever really doing is muting it or unmuting it. And then uh, I have my vocal tracks and my auxiliary. Just for fun, I'm gonna change the colors to how I would set it up myself. So remember, window, color palette. I'm gonna make all the vocal tracks one color. I'm gonna make auxiliary track a different color. And then my master fader, I always just like to keep it red. Uh, I think that's the automatic color that Pro Tools tends to assign. So now by it being a different color, I can just quickly see um, that it's, a, it's not an audio track. So that helps me navigate quicker. So remember our quick key command to get to the mix window quickly is uh, command equals, and here we are. So I changed my view. I, I personally keep it on narrow mix because I have tons of tracks in my template, but uh, view, uh, uh, unselect narrow mix, and so I'm gonna show you with the wide mix uh, view just so uh, you can see a little clearer. So I'm actually, today I'm gonna go from bottom to top instead. Uh, uh, remember this little icon from the edit window, it's, just, it's the same idea. If you click on this, it'll give you the options of what you are going to be seeing. Um, so this is how I tend to have it set up. Uh, maybe sometimes I like a lot of plugins, so uh, I might have two sets of inserts. Inserts are where you're gonna put your plugins um, you're gonna insert the plugin. It's like in, it's like plugging in a program. Um, all of these are my plugins. I have tons of plugins, um, but starting from bottom to top. So this is the menu of what you will see. You can decide later if you're gonna need more sends. I would at least keep one inserts menu, one sends menu. Definitely keep your meters and faders so you can change the the mix. And uh, I/O is your input output. You're gonna want those settings um, on and available. Delay compensation, probably won't really need to reference that, but just so you know what it is, if I turn that on, um, it shows up with these little meters here. Right now they all say zero because I don't have any plugins on. Um, let's see if it changes if I add auto-tune. If I add auto-tune, aha, so this is showing that auto-tune slows my computer down and my or my computer is compensating uh, 2,600 samples. So it's confirming that, yes, this plugin is slowing down the performance of this track, um, which is really in of the entire session. Basically, this is just a hint at about how much work your computer's doing because of the plugins on this track. But in general, I would say use your ears for this. Uh, when you record and you hear something um, sounds really late, uh, it's probably because you have auto-tune on or um, a bunch of plugins that are slowing down the processing and therefore making your vocal seem late so that you would just do the nudge with the, the comma key, pretty much the comma arrow to the left key and uh, until you hear that it sounds great and in time. Um, but for now, I don't need to see that number. I don't really ever reference it. I just use my ears for that. Track colors are important to me. Okay, background vocals are yellow. Uh, lead vocal is gonna be blue. Uh, might even wanna rename that. So I like that better. And then of course, comments, like if you wanted to <laughs> have your comments here, I said hi. Um, but if you don't need any comments, it's just one last thing in your in your window. And I think that's always great. So. From bottom to top on a track, let's go with the, let's look at the audio track. Um, you might notice they pretty much all, no matter what type of track it is, have almost the same stuff. So it tends to look like a lot, uh, especially in my template where I already have a bunch of plugins and sends. Um, it'll be easier to understand uh, when we are building from scratch, I think. So, so looking at this audio track, uh, you know, the color is on the bottom, then the name of the track. Uh, this is the actual volume. The fader is at zero. If I pull it down, it's gonna change uh, the um, dB that we are reducing from zero. Um, you never want your fader 
to be above zero. If you need your audio signal to be louder than zero, a little too quiet, you wouldn't just turn this up. This is called Unity Gain, zero dB. You that, That's the highest you would want it to be. I mean, you kind of can do it. Uh, it's not illegal, <laughs> but it's definitely a little frowned upon. Um, you would want to utilize plugins to make your signal louder um, in post. Rule of thumb when it comes to mixing levels are volumes. I'm going to call them volumes because level is like referring to the gain level, um, which even if I pull this down, remember, uh, it doesn't actually change the gain level. So um, when it comes to volumes, a nice little rule of thumb is like when you can't hear something, uh, such as like the background vocals are overpowering the lead vocal, uh, you wouldn't just turn the lead vocal up, you'd turn all the background vocals down. It's kind of like the Heidi Klum, when you put all this jewelry on right before you leave the house, take something off. Um, sometimes less is very much more, especially in a mix, because when things get too loud, uh, it's gonna you're gonna start to get muddy and it's gonna sound um, it's gonna sound a little messy. So if something is really not loud enough, uh, especially if it's the lead vocal, your first bet is to turn everything else down. And in general. Uh, my background vocals are usually maybe down around here. Moving up, we have your solo button and your mute, mute button. It's great that you can just hover over if you ever are like, wait, what button is this? So you can mute the track uh, and you can solo the solo track. If you're soloed and muted at the same time, you're not going to hear anything because <laughs> solo is first in the chain um, and mute is second. So you're soloing. So you're making it so... You can't hear any of the other tracks, but then you're muting what you're soloing, so <laughs> you'd actually hear nothing. Notice how uh, the click track uh, is grayed out on the solo button. That is a special function called solo safe mode. And what it means is uh, when something else is soloed, this is safe from the, that solo button. So you're actually gonna still hear the click even though this is soloed because this is in solo safe mode. This is a really important thing. Um, and the way you activate it, uh, and I'm going to activate it on my auxiliaries. I always have my auxiliaries uh, in solo safe mode. Um, that's command and then click on the S button. And then command click to turn it off. If you accidentally turn it on, you didn't mean to. Um, that would get really annoying if you have like a vocal, like a random background vocal that <laughs> is always going to be playing when you have the lead soloed. Then you would want to turn it back off, right? Another thing I solo safe is the the instrumental usually. Um, so if I'm ever just, I wanted to hear this one background vocal for a second, but I want to hear it in the context with the music. Um, if I didn't have this in solo safe, I'd have to like hold the shift button and then also click on this S. So you're soloing both at the same time. Instead of changing this out of solo safe mode, I usually pretty much am committed to which tracks have solo safe on. And then anytime I definitely want them off, you can always just mute them. So I think that's the easiest way to go about solo safe. Real quick, I just want to duplicate this auxiliary track and talk about these auxiliaries as though they're two different tracks. So I'm going to I'm going to hit shift option D, which is my duplicate track thing, and I'm going to just say yes to everything else. So I want to treat this aux like the I'll call it the lead aux and then command right arrow tabs me to the next um, track next to it. Um, I'm going to call this reverb. So I want you to start getting in your mind that there's a big difference um, between special effects and like tone shaping, EQ, fine tuning the way audio clarity sounds, things like that. So this is going to be dynamics and EQ. The reason I would want a lead auxiliary to be in solo safe mode, so command, click the S. The reason I'd want this track to be in solo safe mode is because this is going to have um, all my EQs, equalizer. Uh, you might be familiar with just like balancing the sound in your own car. Like, uh, you know, you want to boost, remember you want to boost the treble or you want to boost the bass, uh, things like that. So we'll, we'll definitely go into s actual settings later, but a vocal chain would be like a compressor. So I'm, I'm really just messing with these two folders. EQ and dynamics. That's pretty much the only two folders you're going to be looking in when it comes to what's going on your main lead vocal vocal chain. This is the kind of stuff that's going to be going on your 
when you're at vocal chain. But um, the more fun effects uh, are going to be on, on like reverb, delay, modulation maybe is stuff like chorus, flanger, phasers. We'll give you some real-time examples uh, later on in the course. But for now, um, we're just going to pretend it's reverb. And deverb is probably something you already have or air reverb. Um, fun fact, I've used air reverb cathedral on most of my songs all the time. It's my, one of my go-tos, one of my favorites. Don't worry, I'll make you a, a sheet with my plugin recommendations as well, but I would love to focus on some stock plugins for you um, when we really go into it. So the reason, all of this is to show you the solo safe mode, <laughs> which I'm gonna go command click if I solo the vocal, and these are off, right? Um, and I did my routing already. Right now it's not routed, but we'll get into signal flow shortly. But if I had the signal flow all set up and I had this vocal soloed, it would not have any of these effects on this vocal. So it would just sound like dry, uh, you would not hear the reverb. Um, so you want this to be solo safe so that um, even though you solo this, you still hear the fun reverb or delay or any other effects you've used. And same if you solo this and you don't have this in solo safe mode and you've routed it, you actually won't hear anything at all because you're soloing a signal that is being sent to this track and this track is not on. So you need it to be in solo safe so that when you solo any each, each one, um, you're gonna be able to hear it through your effects. So solo safe, rule of thumb, auxiliaries, definitely. Who knew I was gonna go so in depth on the solo button? So moving up, well, let's go back to our vocal audio track. So the next thing is, this is um, a button I don't think that we'll be needing. Um, this is for more advanced studio setups. Uh, this is the track record enable, or how I like to call the record armed button. Okay, here we go. Now that I have this armed, you can see signal. It is now ready to record me. And this is just saying that this one track is ready to receive my audio, but notice there's no transport in the mix window, so we would need to go back to the edit window to the edit window to press the actual record button. Um, and then once we hit play, it will record my audio onto the track that we've recorded armed. See, by the way, even though we're pressing the record armed button on the track in this window, notice that when we go to the mix window, it is also armed there. These are the same thing. They're just a different view of the same track. So basically all this record armed button does is tells us which track to record audio on. Um, if we change it to the BGV1, that's a bad signal, <laughs> that's too hot. I love that. These are populating as red. That means, hey, you peaked, you, uh, you went too loud. Um, and then I can just click on it and be like, no one ever knows. <laughs> So next we have our panning, which is where it can get really cool with, uh, with your mixing. Lead vocals probably always want to be front and center. Sometimes if I have ad-libs that I don't want to take the complete limelight away from the lead vocal, maybe the chorus is being sung by a lead vocal and then I have an additional ad-lib, I might just like cheat it a little bit, like just so they're not completely trying to occupy the same space to lead vocals, right? So for my background vocals though, I always have an elaborate panning system going on. I'll show you when we get into my template. For the most part, it basically, you just want your um, stacks to be left and right. I always record a lead vocal. And then when I do any sort of harmony or just doubling the lead, I, I don't do just one, I would do two. I always do. If it's a background vocal, it's always two. That's just my method. Definitely in pop music, um, no client has ever had a problem with the way I do background vocals in stacks of two. I think it uh, makes for a nice, easy going like stereo mix. 
unless you're recording like a church choir kind of vibe where uh, you want to give the illusion that uh, singer one is standing here, singer two is standing here, singer three is standing here. That's a different style of recording. But in general, for pop, uh, I would keep this center and the other two left and right. Here's a quick key uh, to be aware of. Anything that's a knob or a slider, um, if you hold the option button and then you click it, it pops it back to zero. Nice. All right, stereo tracks are always going to automatically be panned left and right. See, um, I didn't set that up. They automatically do that. I don't ever touch this button. I deal with anything related to groups in the groups window. Let's make a group just for fun. I'm going to select BGV1 and I'm going to hold shift and then click the second one. Um, so that's BGV2. Just to remind you of navigation of selecting, um, I'm going to hit option and then click this and it's going to unselect everything. If I hit option and clicked one, it would select all of them. Option, click, unclick everything. If I wanted to make a group out of like this vocal and this one, but not this one, right? If I hit shift and I hit click, that would highlight from this to this. So all the tracks in between would also get clicked. I hit option, click again to make them unclick. Click the one you want, and if it's and if you want to select another one that's not right next to it, um, that's when you would click Command and click. Yeah? Helpful, very helpful to know that stuff. I'm going to unclick the vocal by hitting Command, and then I'm going to com Command or Shift because they're right next to each other. Click this, and so I'm going to make a group out of the backgrounds. I'll make a background group, right? Um, I'm also going to unselect that because we don't need to be recording <laughs> record it armed mode really easy once you have them selected it's just command g for group i'm just gonna literally like click everything um i probably won't wanna have the pans but let's see let's see what that would look like if i have the pans uh in two different places and then I did any kind of change when it's group enabled. Let's see what happens. I'm also gonna add the inserts. Let's just add everything. And then mix attributes. I want the solos to be part of the group. I want automation to be part of the group. And sure, why not? Record enable. So this is the attributes of these specific, of these, uh, specific tracks in this group um, because I did not say to follow globals. Uh, here's globals. So if I assign these anything to this globals page uh, and then change globals in like another group's page, it's going to change it for everything. It's kind of like a master selector of the groups section, global, global master. <laughs> okay, um, so I made that group. Now my favorite part, when I drag these up and down, they go together. <laughs> So that saves a lot of time because uh, I'm pretty sure that you're always going to want the volumes of two stacks to be the same. So if, uh, this is a, th a harmony, like a third from the from the lead. Um, a third meaning like if you were singing a C as the lead, uh, these were like, and then you're singing on an E, you're doing it twice. So you want those to be uh, linked. You want them to be the same volume. Um, if I change panning here, uh, since this is already all the way over there, it's not doing anything because I'm turning it that way. Like, this can't turn this way anymore. But if I turn this now, that has some space to go. So that's just how the panning would work within the groups. I'm going to double click to the left of it, and that opens uh, this again. And I'm going to go back to my attributes and I'm going to say, mm -hmm, yeah, it didn't work out with panning, so I don't want to do that. So, And then we're good. And so now it will no longer do anything funny when I play with the panning. Uh, this, this automation option was also in the edit window, if you remember. It's right here. Uh, that's, again, the, the form of autom automation that I don't actually really use. So we can just... Not even worry about it. Okay, so this is the I.O. Um, input, output. So input is first. So the top one is the input. The bottom one is the output. Also, it says out right there. <laughs> it's a good hint. Um, 
when you make new tracks, uh, Pro Tools will probably just like assign something random. Um, so these are quite random inputs. Mostly we can ignore those if we're not putting anything into this track. Since we're not setting up a separate recording track, which I do, and I'll show you how to do it in my template when we go over to my template, I've seen it named just input one or yeah, mic one. Um, mic two would be if you have a second mic input. Um, so that would be like an interface with two microphone uh, XLR inputs. Um, some of these only have one depending on which one you bought. Uh, in that case, uh, easy choice. It's going to be the first one. Um, so mic line L <laughs> for me, uh, for some reason, that's what I haven't named. And output is one and two. If it's going out one and two, one and two means literally your monitors, your left and right monitors. However, when we start to get into signal flow, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bust this out to somewhere else. So I'll show you in a little bit when we get there. Um, so basically, where audio might be entering, and if you're recording to this track, it's going to have to be your microphone. And if you're not recording anything and you're literally not even putting any input here, such as you could be doing all your recording on the vocal one. Um, and then like say you, say you uh, took the lead take, right? Say this was your lead take and you decided, actually, I'm going to do it again but I'm gonna make this a background vocal. Um, that could be something you decide to do. Uh, then you can just drag it to another track, right? I'm just gonna pretend this is, oh, we have the groups. Ah, ha ha. Since I have the group on, <laughs> the group on, since I have the group on, um, it's selecting both channels. So I need to turn off my group so I can actually like operate them independently. Um, so what I mean with, with input is I didn't actually use this input because I, I took the audio from a different track. So I'm not actually recording onto this track. So technically this can be whatever it wants to be because I'm not using it to bring any audio into the software onto this track. So uh, just fun fact, I only record onto one track and then I always drag things down to the other tracks that I want them to be on and the reason is I just think it's a faster way to work some people don't do that some people like to change to the other <laughs> track when they're recording to that track and that's fine that's how they do it output again is output is going out your speakers or wherever you want it to go you see output and then bus you also have no output just be like, I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> and then you would actually literally like not hear anything and uh, notice how it turned gray uh, because you're literally not sending it anywhere. The signal has nowhere to go. Um, keep that in out one and two unless you start to do the routing, which was how I was talking about how I send the vocals to an auxiliary. Um, so let's just start actually as we go talking about the signal flow because um, – it's really relevant here. Again, it's a concept that I found so confusing before, but um, I'd like to really simplify it here. So output one and two, which is be going out your speakers. Um, you're only really ever gonna use output one and two when you're just using a straight up output. Um, a straight up input is gonna be microphone pretty much, right? Um, wherever you can put sound into the program. <laughs> so here's where it gets confusing because you have sends. Um, and you use buses on sends, but then use a bus to send something, okay? So follow this really carefully. When you're using the bus in the IO settings, right, the IO area, you're busing, um, you're sending on a bus, I hate to use the word send, like you're, you're walking the sound onto a bus, um, onto a school bus, and the entire child which is the audio signal the entire sound is going on to that bus and I'm gonna send it out bus one and two okay now where is bus one and two where's where is that going well 
I'm going to send it to my lead auxiliary channel, uh, which has all my EQ, compression, etc. And I'm going to assign the input to bus 1 and 2. Okay, so now we have some signal coming out of the auxiliary. Um, even though there is green metering showing on the vocal track, it's not actually coming out of that. It's now coming out of the speakers through output 1 and 2 on our auxiliary track because of how we routed it. All right? So again, uh, the sound first, as we press play, the sound is coming through the microphone. We record it onto our vocal track, and then we send it out, our outputs, to the bus 1 and 2 over here to the input, bus 1 and 2. And then it goes out, output 1 and 2 to our speakers. Okay? Okay, so I hope that's clear. <laughs> um, comes into the microphone, goes out a bus, enters a bus input, has a input has to receive it, and then send it out somewhere else again, which we're sending output one and two to our speakers. We do this very differently for effects like reverb, delay, think fun stuff. For this, we use the sends. Sends allow us to send only some of the audio to the effect. And it gives us this fader so that we can control how much we are sending to the effect. Cool. So we do need to do one more thing, though. Um, we chose bus 7 and 8. So where the heck is that being received? So we need to set an input on our reverb, say, to bus 7 and 8 to receive the vocal it's kind of counterintuitive because you sometimes would think that I'm putting some reverb onto this vocal, but what's really happening is you're sending part of the vocal to the reverb. Um, and that's how you control it with the fader when you click on your send. Um, so yeah, you would need to just assign a bus to the send and then assign an, that same bus as the input and then your output is going to be one and two. Good old one and two, okay? Um, just another rule of thumb. Uh, mix in any plugin, you'll you'll see uh, something that says mix and a knob or a slider. Um, when you're doing it on an auxiliary, you can always leave it at 100 because then you're really actually controlling it, uh, how much goes to adhere it. So if I, if I uh, option clicked that, so it popped up to zero, if I had it at zero um, and I had this at 100, we would hear 100% reverb. It would be a ton of reverb. I, my reverbs are usually down like down like here. <laughs> uh, use your ears. That was it. That's signal flow. That is, it's literally the art of flow from where does the sound come from where and where does it go? That's it. It's really simple. So your main focuses are coming in through the microphone and then going out somewhere. And if you're going out, the output, the I.O. output, then you're sending the entire signal wherever it's going. I hope I am hammering this home. I've said that. I've said that same sentence like four times already. <laughs> I just really want to see you guys understand that because this is so confusing to me and now I feel like it's it's really not that confusing, right? Because I thought input, output, bus, send, and insert was all the same shit. I was like, why does this one have a fader? Oh, now I get it. Okay. Um, the master doesn't have input because it automatically is everything. Everything is the input. So anything that's happening is going into this fader no matter what. The output is always, you're always going to want it to be one and two of your speakers. You're not going to want to assign it to your headphones even if you're using your headphones um, because you're going to control on your interface itself uh, whether you're using like your headphones or your monitors, you'll just see two knobs and you'll have the volume either up or down on your speakers and or your headphones. Always, always send it out one and two. That's it. That's really everything in the mix window. So it looks like a lot, but it's pretty straightforward, right?
So obviously last week was a lot of material and this is a lot of material too, but um, way more digestible. Hopefully, um, I really want you to make sure that you understand signal flow. And um, if you are still stuck, watch this again. I'd rather you really, really understand signal flow before we move on um, because it is a key concept. So what we are working towards right now is setting up your template so that when you're making your next song and then your next song after that, you don't have to set all these tracks up every time. You can just open from template and boom, you're good. Over time, you'll edit your templates and you'll make them better and you'll refine. But for now, um, this week, your homework is to start really making this look like look like I did. However, we won't do uh, saving templates until the following week. So this week, take the tracks that you made and set up your routing. Um, so I want you to make, if you haven't, well, you should have made uh, one auxiliary track. Make a second auxiliary track and brownie points if you want to start making more effects tracks like uh, you can also make a delay track actually let me just say something about that um, I'm going to shift option D to make an additional auxiliary track I obviously could just I could just uh, do apple N, but I like the duplicate button it makes it easy on me you want all your special effects to be independent from each other you wouldn't want to put um, your reverb, delay, flanger, everybody um, on one track because then you wouldn't be able to independently control the level of the different things. So I want I want the delay to be separate from the reverb. Delay is your echo, echoing sound. Ta, 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 ta. So delay is its own menu here. Let's just do air, multi-delay. This, by the way, a little quick tour of plugin general setup where it says factory default, that's always gonna be where presets are and presets are the best. Presets are, uh, professionals have already set things up for you. So here's a simple quarter note, quarter note delay. Um, that's probably honestly great as is. The only thing I'm gonna change is I'm gonna turn the mix to 100 and I'm gonna control it from somewhere else, so. Why don't you do that for homework? Um, make sure you uh, change your bus to a new bus. And since um, this is the reverb, I'm going to add another send. And that's going to be my delay. And I'll just put a little bit. Um, so, yeah, for your homework, add another auxiliary. Get your buses going. Bus your vocals to their auxiliary tracks. I have two background vocals. I would love to shift Apple N, have you create a new stereo aux track. That's going to be your BGV aux. And uh, I'm not asking you to get into plugins quite yet, but at least just have it set up so, um, so this is all correct. You know, you're going to want to change. You're going to make sure you send your background vocals out. Um, here's another fun quick key. By the way, if I hit option and I click this and I changed it to like bus three and four, option is going to make all of them in your entire session. Option is kind of like an omni button. It's going to make all of them go out bus three and four, which would suck because then you'd have to do all your routing over again. I'm just going to show you, just to prove it, watch watch this guy change when I don't want him to. Bus three and four. Option. Option, click, change. Changes everything. Yuck. I'm going to option output one and two because most of them were out one and two. I'm going to go fix that. Oh, it just irks me. Um, but if you do shift option if you do shift option click it's only going to change the ones that are selected so since i had my both of my bgvs selected shift option was change all of the ones that are selected only option changes everything <laughs> option omni shift 
option, think some Omni. <laughs> maybe okay and then I'm gonna make sure that I go ahead and change my input of my background vocal auxiliary this is pretty much what it should look like right so yeah get it set up you know screenshot this maybe make sure that um, yours looks like mine when you're done just you doing it by hand uh, will help solidify this information for you